Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. For all integers a and b, we have that a plus b is an integer. Now in this series, we are using a list of 10 axioms for the real number system. And I'll leave that list of axioms in the description below. Now, we are going to be using axioms 1, 4, and 5 in this video. Axiom 1 is just the commutative law. Axiom 4 tells us about the real number 0. And it says, for all real numbers x, x plus 0 is equal to x. Axiom 5 tells us that every real number has a negative. And we have, for all real numbers x, x plus the negative of x is equal to 0. Now, using the concept of the negative of a real number, we define the operation of subtraction so that given any two real numbers a and b, we define a minus b to be a plus the negative of b. Now, our real number system is also equipped with a subset that we call the set of positive real numbers, and it's denoted as r plus. And using the set of positive real numbers, we define the greater than relation and the less than relation as follows. Given any two real numbers a and b, we say a is greater than b if a minus b is a positive real number. And we say a is less than b if b is greater than a. And from this definition and axiom 9, we have proven the trichotomy law, which says given any two real numbers a and b, we have that a is greater than b, a is equal to b, or a is less than b. And exactly one of those is true. Okay, so then where do the integers come into play? Well, in our real number system, we have defined the positive integers as a subset of the real numbers. And at this point, we have proven for all positive integers a and b, we have that a plus b is a positive integer. And using the set of positive integers, we defined the set of negative integers as follows. We defined the set of negative integers as the set of all real numbers n that have the property that the negative of n is a positive integer. And from here, we proved for all negative integers a and b, a plus b is a negative integer. And now we define the set of integers as the union of the set of positive integers, 0, and the negative integers. So this is our definition of the set of integers. Now, to prove this theorem, we are going to be using two other preliminary results. Now, when we proved that the negative integers is closed under addition, we first proved, given any two real numbers a and b, we have that the negative of a plus b is equal to the negative of a plus the negative of b. Now, by axiom 1, we can swap these guys around. This is just equal to the negative of b plus the negative of a. And then by definition of subtraction, the negative of b plus the negative of a is equal to the negative of b minus a. So this chain of equalities shows for all real numbers a and b, the negative of a plus b is equal to the negative of b minus a. Now, if we take this equation and negate both sides, then this is what we get. But then, using two other preliminary results we have proven, since we know for all real numbers x, the negative of negative x is equal to x, well, on the left-hand side, this is just equal to a plus b. And since we know for all real numbers a and b, the negative of a minus b is equal to b minus a, well, applying this result to the right-hand side, well, if we get rid of negative, we just swap a and a negative b. So this is just equal to a minus the negative of b. So this chain of equalities shows a plus b is equal to a minus the negative of b. Okay, now actually there's one other preliminary result that I forgot to write down, and that is given any two positive integers a and b, if a is greater than b, 
then a minus b is a positive integer. And I'm gonna call this preliminary result star. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start with the proof, let's first give ourselves two arbitrary integers, a and b. From here, the whole goal is to show that a plus b is an integer. And the way we're going to show that is we're going to split this up into several cases. One possibility is that both a and b are positive integers. If that's the case, well, since the positive integers is closed under addition, this tells us a plus b is a positive integer. And the positive integers is a subset of the integers. So this tells us a plus b is an integer. So we're done. Now, another possibility is that both a and b are negative integers. If this happens, well, we know that the negative integers is closed under addition as well. So we have that a plus b is a negative integer. And we know that the negative integers is a subset of the integers. So this tells us that a plus b is an integer. So we're done. Now another possibility is that a is equal to zero, and another possibility is that b is equal to zero. Now if a is equal to zero, well then a plus b is equal to zero plus b. Right, we can just substitute a for zero since a is equal to zero. But then by axiom one, the commutative law, zero plus b is equal to b plus zero. But then according to axiom four, b plus zero is equal to b and b by assumption is an integer so this tells us that a plus b is an integer so that's what happens if a is equal to zero similarly if b is equal to zero then a plus b is equal to a plus zero right we're just substituting b for zero since b is equal to zero but then by axiom four a plus zero is equal to a and by assumption a is an integer and so this chain of equalities tells us that a plus b is an integer so we're done so at this point we have considered four possibilities so then what possibilities are left we could have a is a positive integer and b belongs to any one of these guys a is equal to zero and b belongs to any one of these guys or a is a negative integer and b belongs to any one of these guys. And so that gives us a total of nine possibilities. But we've already considered the case where both a and b are positive integers. We've also considered the cases where a is equal to zero. We've considered the cases where b is equal to zero. And we've considered the case where both a and b are negative integers. So this leaves us with two more cases to consider. We have a is a positive integer and b is a negative integer, or a is a negative integer and b is a positive integer. Let's first consider the case a is a positive integer and b is a negative integer. Now, since b is a negative integer, well then by definition of the negative integers, this tells us that the negative of b is a positive integer. Now remember, the whole goal is to show that a plus b is an integer. And to show that, we are going to further split this up into three other cases. And we're going to do that using the trichotomy law. So either a is greater than the negative b, a is equal to the negative b, or a is less than the negative b. And in all three cases, we're going to show that a plus b is an integer. So let's first consider the case a is greater than the negative of b. Now, if a is greater than the negative of b, well then by star, that tells us a minus the negative of b is a positive integer. But remember, a minus the negative b is equal to a plus b. So this tells us that a plus b is a positive integer. But remember, the positive integers is a subset of the universe. So this tells us that a plus b is an integer. So we're done. Now let's consider the case a is equal to the negative b. If a is equal to the negative b, then a plus b is equal to negative b plus b. Right? We're just substituting a for negative b 
since a is equal to the negative b. Well then, by axiom 1, we can swap these guys around. But then, by axiom 5, b plus the negative b is equal to 0. And 0 is an integer. So this tells us that a plus b is an integer. So we're done. And finally, let's consider the case a is less than negative b. If a is less than a negative b, well then by star again, we have the negative b minus a is a positive integer. But well, remember, the negative b minus a is equal to the negative of a plus b. So this tells us that the negative of a plus b is a positive integer, but by definition of the negative integers, since the negative of a plus b is a positive integer, that means a plus b is a negative integer. But the negative integer is a subset of the integers, so this tells us a plus b is an integer. So we're done. So what we see here is, no matter what case we have, it follows that a plus b is an integer. Therefore, we have shown if a is a positive integer and b is negative integer, then a plus b is an integer. So now let's move on to our final case, which is if a is a negative integer and b is a positive integer. Now in this case, we're actually going to get a similar argument to what we have above, right? In this case, we have a is a positive integer and b is a negative integer, while in this case we have b is a positive integer and a is a negative integer. So the roles of a and b are swapped. So in the above case, we ended up showing a plus b is an integer, while in this case, we will end up showing b plus a is an integer. And to be more precise, what did we really prove in this previous paragraph? We have proven, given any two integers a and b, if a is a positive integer and b is a negative integer, then a plus b is an integer. This is what we have proven in this previous paragraph. Now, in this paragraph, the roles of a and b are swapped. So if I take a to be b, and I take b to be a, well, since we have b as a positive integer and a as a negative integer, this tells us we will have b plus a as an integer. Another way of putting this is, you can end up rewriting everything that we did in the above paragraph. It's just that everywhere you've written down a, you will write down b instead. Everywhere you've written down b, you will write a instead. And that will end up showing b plus a is an integer. And therefore, by the commutative law, a plus b is an integer. And so we are done. At this point, we have considered all possibilities of a and b. So we have shown, given any two integers a and b, we have that a plus b is an integer. So this completes the proof. Right, and another way of putting this is to say that the set of integers is closed under addition. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.